everything about the way that I perceive the world has completely changed. Um, you know, there's all sorts of danger that maybe I was exposed to before that I didn't realize. All of a sudden, we're all taking a step out into the world and the world that we knew is so much scarier, even though it maybe it hasn't changed so much, but our perception of it has. Hello, my name is Bobby Masters. I'm the literary manager at Stage Left. We are preparing for our next live event, um, Spring Fling. This is a 10 minute play festival running May 27th through the 29th at North Center Town Square. For the next few days, I will be meeting with the playwrights writing for the festival. And today I'm speaking with Stephanie Murphy, the playwright of Cheddar Biscuits. So um, welcome, Stephanie. Hi. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> Cheddar Biscuits. Um, my mind always goes to Red Lobster. Are there any other sorts of cheddar biscuits? I don't think so. I think <laughs> um, this play, and I don't want to give too much away, reminds me of this allegory, um, the um, the cave allegory, Plato, um, where we have these people kind of trapped and not not seeing, not having a, a, a good sense of reality. Um, whereas I think your characters kind of do have this sense of reality. I think it's it's creeping in on them and they're about to take some action. Um, but can you talk about like, how did you come up with this story for this, with this prompt? So, um, you know, the prompt that we were given was how, how was the world changed? Um, and um, I didn't really want to write something explicitly about COVID. I'm sort of tired of dealing with it <laughs> and did not want to touch it. So, um, but instead, um, you know, I, I'd been kicking around um, in my brain for a while, the idea of writing a play about two lobsters sort of facing their inevitable demise. Um, it made me think about how, um, you know, escaping from lockdown is something that we think of, but it also feels dangerous and terrifying, um, sort of like the idea of looking at death and crossing over to the other side. Um, and so I um was able to sort of combine those two ideas and make it a play about um, aging and facing the unknown and figuring out what you want the rest of your life to look like. The play also, because I said that it's a comedy, um, but it also has a lot of deeper messages happening. Um, I got a sense of this like civil disobedience and maybe that's where my mind is right now because all of the events that have been happening and unfolding. But um, I think there's there's some of this happening in your play as well. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, I think it's in there, um, you know, and if, if you look at the, you know, the, the lobsters constantly refer to the big hand taking people out. And if you look at Adam Smith's invisible hand of capitalism, um, <laughs> um, all of a sudden there's a pretty obvious connection there between the two. Um, and I think, you know, moving forward as, as you sort of look toward what, the rest of your life is going to look like and how you're going to handle death and how you're going to handle all of these things. It's important to recognize what forces are at play that are controlling your lives and how to, whether or not you should and how to fight back against it. You could have created any sort of, any sort of um, animal in a cage. Why the lobsters? I just like the idea of lobsters, you know, you go into a supermarket or you go into a, a seafood restaurant and you see lobsters just like on display. And, you know, the idea is like, you can even pick your own one. Um, and they're in this um, almost a, a liminal space um, where they're like on display and they're between being alive and being dead. And um, I, I thought about it once and thought how it might be kind of embarrassing for them, which I'm, I'm sure it's probably not for lobsters. But um, it's such a public, um, a, a public way for us to sort of reckon with the fact that these animals are going to die, and we don't see it with a lot of. I'm not a, I'm not a vegetarian, but it's, we, it's not something we really see with a lot of other animals that we eat. Um, you, you know, you don't go to a farm and like kill your own cow. You know, it's, um, it's very um, almost grotesque if you think about it too much. <laughs> I'm intrigued by the fact that it's such a public death row for lobsters, I guess. So I want to talk about also um, your collaborative partner. Um, the, uh, the director of this piece is your husband. Um, mm -hmm. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what that process is like. My husband is also a collaborative partner for me sometimes. He's my lighting and scenic designer usually. Oh, that's um, cool. So talk about what it's like for you and, and your, your husband. 
Sure. So um, the one thing that's really nice about it is um, I find writing to be um, embarrassing. <laughs> As um, you know, and it's weird. My uh, my background is as an actor. That's where all my training is. Um, and um, but I never found acting embarrassing because it's something that you can sort of do, and then it's over. And um, writing is so much more permanent, and there's so much more of a commitment to what you've put down on the page than there necessarily is to maybe a bad performance, right? Um, and so to me, letting somebody read my writing is really it's a very vulnerable process. Um, and so it really helps, you know, Seth and I've known each other for eight years at this point, we've been married for three of them. And um, it's really helpful to have somebody who you can trust that much to, um, you know, give honest feedback, but who's gonna know where you're coming from. Um, and so it's been, it's been a very cool pro process. We haven't been able to work on a project together like this yet. And it's been um, really nice. Um, I look forward to seeing your show. Um, at the end of the month, um, Cheddar Biscuits at North Center Town Square. I will see you in the park. Bye, Stephanie. Bye. Thanks, Bobby.